To create stairs, we will start by selecting the first floor plan and zoom in to the area where the stairs will be located. Now let's open the stairs tool. We are now presented with three options that will let us sketch the stairs, run lines, boundary lines, and riser lines. We will start by sketching a run line. In the properties, we will notice some default constraints and dimensions set by Revit. The base level is set for the first floor, and the top level is set for the second floor. The width of the stairs is set for 3 feet, and the desired number of stairs is calculated using a target tread depth of 11 inches and a riser height of 7 inches. To sketch a run line, we will click on a starting location and then move the cursor along the desired path. Revit automatically places risers based on the constraints and dimensions set in the properties. Notice that the risers remaining decreases as the number of risers created increases. Once the full run line has been sketched, we can select the green check mark to create our stairs. Now let's switch to a 3D view to see the stairs that we have just made. If a stair is not in the proper location, it is easy to change their orientation and direction. Let us switch to the first floor plan and select the stairs. By clicking the small blue arrow at the end of the stairs, the direction of the stair is reversed, and it is noted by the long arrow labeled up. We can see this change more clearly in the 3D view. In order to move the stairs into the proper location, let us return to the first floor plan view. We will then start by returning the stairs to their previous direction. Next, it will help us locate the stairs if we underlay the second floor over the first floor in the view properties. As you can now see, the second floor is now faintly visible in the first floor plan view. To relocate the stairs, we will select the stairs and open the Move tool. Click on a point on the stairs to use as a reference, and then select a new location for the reference point. As seen in the 3D view, the stairs are now going the proper direction and are placed in the proper location. Sketching run lines also allows us to make more creative stairs, like L-shapes and U-shapes. Let us sketch one run line, creating about half of the risers. Next, let's sketch a second run line, perpendicular to the first, creating the rest of the risers. Revit will automatically connect these run lines to create an L-shaped stair. We can see our finished staircase in the 3D view. Although this is not a straight stair, we can still change its direction by selecting the small blue arrow located on the end of the stair. We can also move it into place by opening the Move tool, selecting a reference point, and then choosing an end location. Once again, we can switch to the 3D view to see the finished product. While this technique is useful, it is easy to make a mistake while placing the run lines. Starting from scratch, we will sketch a new stair that contains an error. After placing the first run line, it is important not to place the second one too close. If this is done, a funnel is created in the stairs. In a 3D view, we can more clearly see this funnel and why this error is so important to avoid. Using run lines, we can also create U-shaped stairs. After sketching one run line, let us sketch a second parallel to the first. Once again, Revit will automatically connect these run lines. We can now select the green check mark to finish the stairs and return to the 3D view to see what we have created. Returning to the first floor plan, let us move the stairs into their proper position. Open the Move tool, select a reference point, and select an end location for that reference point. 
Returning to the 3D view, we can see our finished U-shaped stair. Ramps can be created in much the same way as stairs. Let us return to the first floor plan and open the ramp tool. Once again, we can sketch a ramp by drawing its run line. By default, ramps are set to span between the base level, the first floor, and the top level, the second floor. However, many ramps are used to span shorter distances, so we will set our top level to the first floor and set a top offset of 3 feet. This will create a ramp that is 3 feet high. When drawing our run line, we will notice that the sketch is way too long, which is indicative of a small slope. To change the slope, let us edit the type properties of our ramp. Change the slope from 1 12th to 1 6th, and select OK to apply these changes. By increasing the slope, we can now sketch a run line of a more adequate length. Selecting the green check mark will complete our ramp, which can now be seen in our 3D view. As with stairs, ramps can be made into L and U shapes. Open the ramp tool and set the desired properties. Let's now sketch the first run line. Next, we will sketch our second run line perpendicular to the first. Revit will automatically connect these run lines and clicking the check mark completes our ramp. In 3D view, we can see our newly created ramp. As with stairs, the railings and the ramps act as separate elements from the ramps themselves. Therefore, they can be selected and deleted if they are not necessary.